Hey everyone, welcome to Elevate Beauty Company. My name is Summer and today we're gonna to be putting the Hot Tools One Step Blow Dryer against the Revlon One Step Blow Dryer. We're gonna see which one is better, which one performs under the heat and under the pressure of a head-to-head -head battle. I'm excited to be putting these ones head to head today. This is the Hot Tools One Step Blow Dryer and this is my beloved Revlon One Step Styler and Volumizer. This has been my tried and true go-to dryer for about a year now. I even lost it once. I left it in a hotel in Montreal and then had to buy another one because I could not get by without it. A blow dryer and round brush just do not do my hair justice. I am very passionate about the fact that I believe everybody needs one of these in their life. And this guy, uh, it's like the same exact thing. They're almost the same price. This one's just about $10 more and I can usually find this one on sale for about $10 less than its retail price. So about $20 difference if you can get this one on sale. That for me is a big plus. I am budget conscious. And so if I can get a similar or pretty much the same product for $20 cheaper. I will do that every single time. But let's take a look at the size. They are literally the same exact size. I will say the Hot Tools has a nine foot cord and this one, the Revlon's about two feet shorter. So if length of the cord is important to you, go with the Hot Tools because it is quite a bit longer. Now the shape, is exactly the same. The shape of the oval is exactly the same. It's got the same bristles. It has the soft bore bristles and the harder bristles. It's got the same venting in exactly the same place, in exactly the same shape. Even down to like the detailing of how it's put together is exactly the same. We've got the off, cool, and high functions. I am going to be shocked if they perform drastically different. I have a feeling they're going to show up the same way. My hair will look the same. I won't have to redo it, which will be so, so nice. But we're gonna put it to the test. The first thing I do before even setting foot next to my heat tools is put a heat protectant on my hair. This is the Lange Rival Heat Protectant. I like it a lot, it smells really good, and it works. So those are like the main things about a product that I look for. Does it work? Is it affordable? Am I gonna like the way it smells? I'm gonna grab my favorite brush. This is the Kristen S brush. It's a shower brush that you can use with wet hair. It's similar to a wet brush. Brushes out your hair super easy without pulling and damaging it, and so. Just brush this guy out. Then we're gonna part it in the middle so we can kind of have, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna leave this loose part for you guys. Okay, hair is parted. We're gonna do half with the Hot Tools, half with the Revlon. I always pull my hair up and do it in sections. So I will say the thing that I'm really interested to experience is the heat. The Revlon does get really, really hot. I think that's the main complaint that I hear from people and the thing that I kind of struggle with. But for me, it's worth it. All the other bonuses and pluses and positives way outweigh the heat. And I just make sure that I use a heat protectant and then I'll switch it to cool and let it cool down as I, find, as I finish blow drying a section. And that kind of helps me manage the heat. So I'm gonna do the Revlon first and we're gonna see how the Hot Tools holds up. There we go. So here's kind of the gold standard. It's soft, it's smooth, the ends are not frizzy, they're kind of nice and flat. That's what I kind of struggle with is frizzy hair because my hair is naturally wavy, as you can see over here. Getting this end to kind of smooth out is what I find really important. I don't want to have to use a lot of extra heat with a flat iron to get that done. And the red one does it really, really nicely. So let's throw on the hot tools. I will say that there's like a smell to it. 
This isn't gonna make any sense to anybody else, but it smells like plants to me. Growing up, my mom did interior landscaping, so it smells like plant spray or like the moss that you put in the bottom of the pots. Don't ask me why I put that together, but it's not like a, <coughs> maybe it is a little, it's a little strong, but it's not like an overpowering chemical, artificial like danger sense that I get. It's just probably something where you're heating up a, a tool for the first time and it is going to have a certain smell, but it's certainly not like super pleasant. I don't remember the Revlon having that. However, I've had it for like six months. So honestly, I don't even, I couldn't tell you either way. I'm gonna have to say I'm pretty impressed but not surprised because it's literally the same exact tool. Like it looks exactly the same, but it's also performing exactly the same. Now, neither of them have really heated up too much yet. So we're gonna keep on going and I will check back in and let you guys know how it's going with the heat comparison. This one's starting to get warm. It's not like uncomfortable yet, but it is getting pretty warm. This one's getting a little bit more volume in like middle of the, the hair area. This one's a little bit more straight, but that could also be because I'm just using two different hands and so it's just gonna be different. Well, I'm using the same hand, but it's different positioning on different sides. You know what I'm talking about. This side is done, this is the Revlon side. It's really nice and smooth. I don't like it to have too much volume, so I do like that about this one. Um, the handle right here at the top gets really, really warm. That's where I notice most of the heat, so I'm gonna pay special attention to this guy and see what happens. say they're pretty comparable this Revlon side is just a tad bit more frizzy so I will say that the hot tools did a better job at kind of calming that frizz and making it more sleek and smooth it did get less hot so if you're <coughs> it did get less hot so if you are concerned about damage to your hair if you have dry brittle hair if you have bleached hair all of those things that make your hair more susceptible to breaking, I would for sure go with the Hot Tools. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think that it's going to, in the end, protect your hair just a little bit better than the Revlon. Like I said, they're literally built the same. I think the heat is maybe the, the difference in this one that's changing the outcome in the ends of my hair and just the user experience of having that Hot Tool in your hand. Now the Revlon works beautifully. You guys know that I have seen Sung, sung its praises, that's the right word. Sung its praises endlessly. I think it's still fantastic, but I think when you go head to head, performance wise, Hot Tools has a tiny, tiny edge. Like this is still really hot to the touch, and this one's pretty cool. And who knows, it could be because this one's just older, I've used it more, it's more worn in. But as far as first impressions go, comparing this one to this one, this one's a little bit, um, tiny edge over user experience, but it is a higher price point. So for you, it's just a matter of deciding which one's more important to you. So there you go. I hope this was useful. I hope it's helpful when you guys are deciding which one to purchase. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Which one would be the one that you would pick based on my review? So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.